It is so great to be here together yeah. in this new building. Yeah. Wow. I just felt, I feel a little overwhelmed with gratitude to the Lord. As, as I've been thinking over these uh, past few weeks, uh, it just became so apparent that this is where God wants us. You know, we, we knocked on a couple of other doors, and God said no to those doors. And I am just so confident this is where he wants us. And I don't even know all of why. I have some just little glimpses, but I just know God's got something good for us. And he's got a reason for us to be here, right where we are. I just want to say, before I even go further, a huge, from the bottom of my heart, thank you to everyone who helped get us ready for this day. So much has been done already. We called this the before, but the before was actually a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> and since that time, volunteers and staff have worked so hard. They removed the chandeliers in here, the brass fixtures in here, and many other places also. They've set up TVs and sound equipment and, and video equipment. They've cleaned carpets. Uh, a, a couple of our volunteer teams a couple of times have, have just vacuumed the whole place. People have cleaned bathrooms, put up signs, created sign frames. And I just can't, I, they've removed some dead trees. Like, I just can't even begin to say how many things have been done just to get us to this spot. And so I, I want to, the Bible says, give honor where honor is due. If you helped serve, you helped move things down here, or did uh, any of this stuff getting the building ready, would you stand to your feet right now? And we just want to give you some applause and say thank you so much. Wow. We really appreciate you. We are all here worshiping because... You went before us and got things ready. Man, we're so grateful. Over these uh, three Vision Sundays, I'm gonna, uh, my plan is just to give you a little bit of an update, a different update each week, so you want to make sure you come back next week. Uh, and today I want to just tell you just a little bit verbally of what's going to happen in the building. Where are we going? What's the vision for the building? Uh, right here, we're in a room. It's the worship center. Uh, in... Uh, uh, and I'm going to tell you some things that will be kind of short-term and some things that will be long-term. Short-term, right away, we're going to take out this whole wall right here and enclose the carport, the huge carport, the length of this building. And that will be our new stage. And all the chairs will face that way. So that's a big change. Uh, we'll, uh, in the longer term, we will take out those walls right there and put in operable walls, they're called movable walls, so that those can be overflow seating and, uh, on Sundays and for conferences, and that they could be classrooms for connect groups and things like that. So that's, that's a big change. Uh, we, we have a huge remodel before us. Believe it or not, we have been working so hard over these past few weeks, but there will come a time when we've, we've come to the end of what we can do uh, before permitting. So we will, uh, one of the big things that we're doing is a change of occupancy for a couple of large meeting spaces here. So then that takes a long time uh, before, before that happens. Uh, and then going for the building permit and all that kind of stuff, we're going to be moving rooms around. We've been calling it phase one and phase two but there really aren't phases. There's phase one, and then as the Lord provides for the rest. That's really, there is a phase one. We do, we know what phase one is. That is certain. The rest of it, we know, we just don't know when. It's just as the Lord provides. Uh, so we're going to be talking about that more over these next couple of weeks. This uh, worship center in large, doubled, I think about approximately doubled in size, will be a place for worship services just like this, uh, I also envision conferences, uh, marriage conferences, whether they're for the region or not, I mean for the world or not, they're for our region, for sure, that's what I picture, uh, uh, marriage conferences, uh, a worship conference, I'm already beginning to work on that, and I'm so excited, uh-huh, you know, you know, and uh, the other one is deliverance conference, we we'll want to work on that, I just see God setting people free in this room, in this place, and in this building. 
So excited about it. The lobby will eventually be expanded where our nursery is now, today. Uh, eventually down the road, that room will be gone. That's the plan. And so we'll have nice, big, huge gathering spaces out there for lots of loud laughter and friendships in the lobby. Our kids area, we're kind of uh, near where they will be today, uh, but we'll be creating a large kids lobby uh, where, where, where people can check in, expanded classrooms, and then we'll be busting into the garage. So that's one of the change of occupancy rooms uh, where the garage will be our, our elementary kids' church, main kids' church room. Uh, so that's future. That's a little ways further down the road. The youth will go to the upper room, just like Jesus on Passover night. And the students will have their own third place. You know, are you familiar with that term? Their own third place where they can, can discover Jesus and learn about him, but also have a healthy environment to hang out in. And they'll hear life-changing messages just geared for them. Our offices are not a lot happening to those, just, uh, just a little cosmetic, but those will be places where we can counsel people and walk them through their hard times, where we can pray, where we can plan, where we can study. And then just outside the door that you already see our plaza, we just see that plaza lit up with strings of cafe lights, a fire pit for making s'mores and having fun with people, hanging out. This is going to be, it already is a beautiful place, but it's going to be an even more beautiful place yeah. once we and the Lord get done with it. Yeah. So excited. So I would love to all together just pray a prayer of dedication. If you're in the room, would you stand? If you're online, would you pray and get ready to pray together? And would you bow your heads with me? Let's pray. Lord, we just pray and we ask you right now in this prayer of dedication, may this be a place where our Father God is worshipped out loud and with joy and passion. May this be a place where Jesus is preached and the gospel goes forth. Lord, may this be a place where the Holy Spirit feels at home and where you can come and move among us and talk to us and encourage us and change us and transform us. May this be a place where God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit is front and center, where we are looking to you and praising you and praying to you and worshiping you, Lord God. May this be a place where people from all walks of life I'm picturing people, and I pray now that they would come, city officials, school administrative officials, teachers and tradesmen, business people, uh, Lord, and uh, people that are impoverished and even homeless currently that will be rehoused because they are set in their right mind, they have a purpose, they have a destiny, and they find salvation. People from all walks of life, may they find salvation and freedom and Holy Spirit power here in this place, Lord God, because you are the solution to our issues. Lord, I pray for healing and freedom to go forth from this place. May this be a place where kids find a, a, a place of safety, a, 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 like a haven, a, a, a refuge from that sometimes harsh world out there, Lord God. And may they find loving teachers and, and people that will show them Jesus and watch over them and, and keep them safe and help them to have fun and find Jesus, Lord. Lord, may this be a place where students, middle school students, high school students, college students come and they find Jesus. They hear you, and they hear about your power and your glory, and they find you for themselves. Lord, I pray that young people would be called into full-time ministry, and, and Lord God, sent on short-term mission trips from this place, Lord God. Lord, I pray that this would be a place where you are glorified, Lord. I pray this would be a place where people discover their true identity in Christ and embrace you, Lord God. And Lord, we pray that you would be here, that every time we come, Lord God, we, we, we don't need another club. Lord God, we need a place where we can meet with Almighty God. And so, Lord God, I pray this would be a place that we set this, this, this place, this property, this building apart. We set it apart. This is holy ground for you, for your purposes, for your glory, and for your honor. We dedicate this place to the Lord's work in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Go ahead and be seated. Wow. 
Uh, yeah, one thing, uh, uh, Shelly just reminded me that uh, we, have, I, we have leased the parking lot from the, the restaurant just north of us, next door to us. That lease doesn't start until we're here uh, officially every Sundays, every Sunday, uh, but the, we will have their parking. So our, our, the parking you see is more than doubled. So plenty of room for us all to come. I cannot wait until we're in two, three services here. It's going to be awesome. And then we can head next door for some good Chinese food. Yeah. <laughs> Well, let, let's continue. That's today's update. I'll give you some different updates as we go along the next couple weeks. But would you turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 to 20? And we're going to continue on with our Sermon on the Mount series. The Sermon on the Mount is long. Okay, Jesus preaches longer than me, everybody. Uh, and it most likely is a summary of, of several sermons and messages of his over several days. So it's pretty long. So what we're doing is breaking it up into bite-sized chunks in mini-series, just like on TV, doing some mini-series from the Sermon on the Mount. So we just finished The Good Life. If you missed any of that, you can find that online. Uh, and we're going to go ahead to just a three-week mini-series of Provision Sundays on influence. Influence. And I believe that God is calling us to be a people of influence. Uh, I, I believe that since I was a young boy, I have been a person of influence, and I might tell you a little bit about that as we go along. This church, this congregation, has, has historically been a church of great influence around the world, and we, we have been uh, thinking and planning and doing so many things that needed to be done over these past 10 years, but I believe that now God is saying, okay, we've dealt with those issues, come on up. Come on up, let's step up, and let's step into your God-given destiny. And that, I believe this is that time, and this is just, we're at the beginning of it today. It's so good. So just, just a couple of truths I want to bring you today. The first one is that Jesus fulfilled God's purposes for you. Jesus fulfilled God's purposes for you. Jesus fulfilled God's purposes for you in your place. For you. Matthew 5, 17 and 18 says, Jesus is speaking, by the way, this is his sermon. Don't misunderstand why I have come. Guess what? Right off the bat, we know people were misunderstanding why he came. And so he says, okay, I got to set you straight because you don't understand why I've come. So he says, don't misunderstand. He's going to explain it. I did not, somebody say not, I did not come to abolish the law of Moses. Now, we in the Christian church, we kind of think maybe he did, but he said, no, I did not do that. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. That's why we read the whole Bible. Not, not abolished, not done away with. No, Jesus said, I came to accomplish their purposes. The Old Testament, the, the law, the prophets, and, and the, the wisdom books, all those, all those writings, they were for a purpose. God gave them to reveal himself and his plan to us. And Jesus said, I came to accomplish their purposes. So in some ways, he came to wrap them up a little bit. He said, I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not even the smallest detail of God's law will disappear until its purpose is achieved. So we know from the, the rest of the gospel story, and we can tell from this, this little place right here, Jesus was misunderstood, and he was falsely accused of coming to tear down the law of God. They said, you're coming to tear down the temple, you're coming to tear down the law and throw out Moses. And so Jesus had to set up straight, and he actually came to fulfill the law and prophets, to fulfill it, to accomplish God's purposes for humanity. He built on the law. Well, how did he do that? How did Jesus build on the Old Testament? Well, first of all, he fulfilled hundreds of Old Testament prophecies about the Messiah. Way too many to, to be a coincidence. Uh, for example, he was born in Bethlehem of Judea, just as Micah said. He uh, was a king who rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, uh, which that's not how kings ride in. So this was significant. Kings ride in on a white stallion to conquer. He rode in on a lowly, humble donkey. That was a prophecy. He was the suffering servant Isaiah talked about so beautifully. He was pierced 
but no bones were broken when he hung on the cross. Those are two prophecies. He was deserted by his close friends. And on and on and on again, Jesus fulfilled those, no longer waiting for those. He fulfilled them. He also embodied a lot of Old Testament symbols. For example, Jesus is the ultimate Passover lamb. He said, you know that sign of Jonah who was in the belly of the fish for three days? Just like that, I'm going to go in the grave for three days and then rise. And on and on. Jesus lived a sinless life and he obeyed all of God's moral laws in the Old Testament there. He was our ultimate high priest representing us before the Father. And the whole book of Hebrews in the New Testament talks about that, how Jesus fulfilled that. No longer needing, we don't need to sacrifice sheep and goats and bulls because Jesus fulfilled that. It's not that he did away with like, oh, that, none of that was good. It's not saying that. He's saying that was a picture, that was a foreshadowing, but I'm here now. And he became the ultimate sacrifice. And what is so crazy is he is the one who offered it. He's the priest who offered the sacrifice, and he is the sacrifice. Do you see how he fulfilled and completed and wrapped up the Old Testament? Jesus accomplished for you and me what God always had in mind for humanity, restored relationship with him and forgiveness of sins and all of those things that he provided. He came to finish the old covenant and to establish the new covenant, which is what we are living in today. But that covenant, that agreement, that, that a contract, it's, it's more than a contract, it's a covenant between God and humanity. Colossians 2, 13 to 14 kind of wraps this up. It says, you were dead, you and I were dead, spiritually dead, because of your sins. And because your sinful nature was not yet cut away, someone needs to hear this today. Then God made you alive with Christ, for he forgave all our sins. You need to hear this if you're still beating yourself up over your sins because Jesus paid for them. Give them to him. You need to hear this if you've never asked Jesus to take away your sin because you can be made alive in Christ. He canceled the record of the charges against us. Do you know what the record of the charges against us was? The Old Testament. That all the things that said you must be perfect, you, you uh, must serve God perfectly, you must serve man you, perfectly, all those were charges against us because none of us did. None of us were perfect. And so those charges, Jesus in the New Testament says Jesus took those with him to the cross. And he canceled the record. And God says, what sin? What, what sin are you talking about? That's gone. It's buried. It's covered in the blood of Jesus Christ. It was nailed to the cross. And he took our sins away by nailing it to the cross. Jesus fulfilled God's purposes for you, for you. He did it for you. My second truth, Jesus calls you to be an influencer for him. Jesus calls you now to be an influencer for him. He's done everything for you. Now he calls you to do something. And as I read this next verse in Matthew 5 from the Sermon on the Mount, would you listen for how Jesus talks about influencing others? Okay, so going right on from in the Sermon on the Mount from where I read earlier, verse 19, Jesus said, so, he's been talking about the law, law is not going to be abolished, so, if you ignore the least commandment, so Jesus is talking about character, and you, you, and you teach others to do the same, now he's talking about influence. You will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Now he's talking about reputation. And then he contrasts it. He said, but anyone who obeys God's laws and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So there are basically two types of followers. And I believe that both of these followers, they're followers. It's not people inside the church and outside the church. They're both followers because they're people who are in his day teaching others, but they didn't have it on the inside themselves. So two types of people who are followers of Jesus. Some followers treat the word of God as if it were sort of obedience optional. 
Uh, sort of like the pirate code, more what you'd call guidelines than actual rules. <laughs> the other type of disciple obeys God's law. The way Paul wrote it was obeying the law of Christ. Obeying the law of Christ. Which type are you? Which type of disciple are you? But no matter what type of disciple or follower or apprentice of Jesus you are, none of you lives only to yourself. And this is a thing uh, in our country. We, we sometimes get so individualistic, we don't understand. Oh no, we're all connected. We all affect and influence each other. Every single one of you is an influencer and a leader. For some of you, you do not see yourself that way. Your life is teaching someone about Jesus. You might be thinking, I'm not an influencer. I'm not a leader. I don't have an official title, like, a, you know, in the church or something. I'm just a regular worker at my job. Uh, I'm not teaching anyone any Bible classes or anything. But the definition of influence is it's simply the ability to have a small or large impact on the character, thinking, or behavior of someone else. Influence is just simply impacting another person's thinking, behavior, or their character. The way you live impacts others. The way you follow Jesus or don't follow Jesus influences the others in your life every day, your spouse if you're married, your kids, your parents, your friends, your coworkers, your classmates at school. Your, the way you follow or not follow Jesus impacts others. It affects them. The way you treat the people in your family is either compelling or repelling other people to follow Jesus. Your words about our government your attitudes toward your work or your school, the way you treat the person in line in front of you at the grocery store, all of thou, those things speak very loudly about what you really believe about Jesus and his word. So are you influencing others by default, like without choosing how you do it, or are you influencing others on purpose? in a positive way, pointing them to Jesus. Proverbs 13, 20 says, walk with the wise and become wise. Associate with fools and get in trouble. But I want to flip this kind of the opposite way. So are the people walking with you getting wiser or getting in trouble? The good news is that just like our church is getting a fresh start in this season. 11 years ago, God brought uh, Pastor Shelley and me here to bring a fresh start. And I can tell you, getting here did not look at all like I pictured. <laughs> I really had it all mapped out very neatly for the Lord. And that did not happen but I'm confident that his way was better and I suspect that I was not ready and I know that we were not ready, but now we are. How do I know? Because God said, it's time. That's how I know. He brought everything together and just like the building that we're sitting in, if you're here in, the, in person, is getting a second chance as a place focused on resurrection instead of death, just like those second chances, just like those second chances, you too can have a fresh start as a follower of Jesus, as his apprentice. Jesus said, if you obey the law of Christ and your life teaches others to do the same, you will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. You may not have a, 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 a pulpit platform like Billy Graham did, but Jesus calls you great if you obey the law of Christ and you influence others to do that same thing. You don't have to have a position. You just have to be positioned to point people to Jesus. And you can be an influencer that is great in the kingdom of heaven. 
You don't have to dwell on your past mistakes. Maybe you're disciple number one, that you've been living as if the Bible was obedience optional. Okay, that was then. You don't have to dwell on that. I encourage you instead to focus on Jesus Christ. Hebrews says he is the initiator, the champion who initiates and completes and perfects your faith. So I want to encourage you today, don't, don't look down at your past and, and regret all the, all the mistakes you made. Leave that under the blood of Jesus Christ. Look forward and look at Jesus. It, uh, I, I read in Prevail, our, our devotional this week, we tend, our feet tend to go where our gaze is focused. I thought that was just such a cool line. And I just said at that moment, Jesus, I want to be focused on you. So without even thinking about it, I'm just walking towards you all the time, following your example, following your lead, listening for what you're asking me to do today. Jesus is the greatest influencer of all time. When you think about what he did with his life, there, there were a couple of times uh, where we read in the Old Testament, he stepped into history because there was something big going down with his people before he was ever born as a baby in Bethlehem. He appeared to Moses in the burning bush. And he, he in those moments, changed Moses from a guy who was hiding in the backside of the desert to a world leader leading a nation who was enslaved out of Egypt. Uh, we, we, we read in the Bible the story of Jesus appearing to Gideon, another guy hiding out below ground, trying to scrap together some food for his family. And the, the, the angel of the Lord, not an angel of the Lord, the, the angel of the Lord Jesus comes to him and says, you are a mighty champion. Get up and start fighting. And he is transformed into a, the leader of his nation. It's amazing the influence that one meeting with Jesus can have on a person. And then, of course, he was born as a baby, took on flesh and bones. He became one of us. He bridged that huge gap between God and humanity. And while he walked those few short years on this earth uh, in, the, in the confines of, of human flesh, he influenced groups of 12, of 72, and after he rose, of 500 at one time. And those, uh, compared to world population, those are pretty small groups. But in those meetings, Jesus' influence changed them from hiders to people that would carry the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, to the four corners of the earth. Talk about the greatest influence. And 2,000 years later, his influence is stronger than ever. Wow. Wow. He is an amazing, great influencer. When you influence others to follow Jesus, whether it's by the silent witness of a life that's obeying the law of Christ, or if you're using your words and actually verbally pointing people to Jesus, when you do those things, you are following in the footsteps of Jesus as his influencer. Some people may reject Jesus, but you are not like that. For you are a chosen people. I want to just declare what the Bible says over you. You are royal priests, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. So in Jesus' name, I call you to greatness. Greatness in the kingdom of heaven. If you're in the room, would you stand to your feet? If you're watching online, would you even stand right where you are? And I'd like for us to go to a time of prayer. So everybody, would you stand and let's pray. Would you bow your heads with me and let's pray. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would help us to live a life of following in your footsteps. Lord, you have, called, you have told us in this passage today that if we will just obey you and then point others to you, help them to obey you. You would call us great. And so, Lord, I pray that we would be a people that you could call great. Lord, I pray that we would be a people who obeys the law of Christ, that, that we uh, would be a people 
who, who teaches the law of Christ by our life and by our words, and that points people to you, Jesus. May we be a great people. With your head still bowed, I just want to ask you a, a, couple, a couple of uh, potential responses here. Are you a follower of Jesus, but you feel convicted that your influence has been more repelling than compelling? Do you want a second chance as an influencer for Jesus? Maybe you know there's some, some habits or some words or some actions that you've done that have actually caused people to go, well, if that's a Christian, I don't want that. That's repelling. And maybe there are some of you today that, want to, that, that you want to repent of repelling. And you, and you want a second chance. God is a God of second chances. A second chance at being a compelling follower of Jesus. Would you just raise your hand? All the heads are bowed. And I see lots of hands going up, and my hand is up. I repent of those things that I've done, that if someone was watching my life, they would have turned them off to Jesus. You put your hands down. I want to talk to another group of people, and maybe it's a, some of the same people. Do you want to step up your influence for Jesus to be a witness, to actually share Jesus with others who don't know him? Not only silence, but also through actions and words. If you want to step up in your witness for Jesus, would you raise your hand? Oh, my goodness. This is so exciting and encouraging. Yes, I declare over you, you are a great people. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you would forgive us for our past and help us to leave it there. Lord, forgive us when we have actually repelled people from you. Uh, and I'm thinking of my words and my actions. It's probably the same for all of us. Lord, forgive us, cleanse us, and help us to have a fresh start, just like this building, just like our church. Lord, I pray for all of us, Lord, that we would step up in our witness, that we would obey the law of Christ, which says to love God with everything you've got, love your neighbor as yourself, treat others the way you want to be treated. Lord, I pray that we would love you with our life, that we would obey the law of Christ. I pray, Lord, also that you would give us new connections in 2021 yeah. with people who don't yet know you. Lord God, lift our eyes. Perhaps we've walked by the same person every day for years and not ever had a conversation. Lord, help us to look in the eyes of our cashier at the store. Help us to look in the eyes of our bank teller, Lord God. Help us to look in the eyes of our coworker, our classmate, our principal, our, our university professor. Lord God, help us to see the people that you see. Help us to see our neighbors, see our spouse and family members. Lord God, help us to see and help us to be a witness. Lord Jesus, we, I declare, are a great people, great in the kingdom of heaven. Praise you, Lord. With your head still bowed, I want to give one more invitation. I don't know where you are spiritually, uh, but I, I, I want to invite you to take the first steps to become a disciple of Jesus, a follower, an apprentice of Jesus. Why do you need to do that? Because we are all born in sin, but Jesus took your sins and nailed them to the cross. And he's, he's just waiting right now for you to say, Jesus, forgive me of my sin. I, I repent. I turn away from those sins and turn to you. So how, how do you do that? Turn away from all those things, all those sins, those things that harm yourself and others, things that separate you from God. Turn away from that. Turn your life over to God and let Jesus be your leader. That's how. That's the simple message. And whether you're online or in the room today, I want to give you the opportunity to put your faith in Jesus. Some of you may have been in church goers for a long time, but you've never given your life to Jesus. Today's your day. Repent and find a life. If you want to do that today, would you raise your hand? If you're in the room, raise your hand and I'll see you and I'll just pray for you specifically. If you're online, raise your hand and God will see you. And I'm going to pray for you also. Yes, hands are up here. Hands are up. And I'm so thankful for that. Today is a day to, to ask Jesus to take away your sins. And he always says yes to that prayer. 
So I just want to coach you in a prayer. Would you repeat after me, but say it to Jesus. Jesus, I invite you into my life. Please forgive me of my sins. Take them. They're yours. I don't want them. Make me new on the inside. And I choose to follow you starting now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. And if you, if you prayed that prayer, whether you're online or in the room, either way, would you take out your cell phone right now and just let me know. Just text faith in Jesus to the phone number 97,000. And that will let me know. You, you uh, put your faith in Jesus today. You got to let me know. And then that will cause me to pray for you specifically by name this coming week. All right? So would you do that super, super important step? Uh, you can at least tell me. All right, that you put your faith in Jesus today, and then we'll guide you from there and give you some next steps. Praise the Lord. Wow. I am pumped up for you, ready to be used of Jesus, ready to walk and keep my gaze on him. Amen? Amen. Well, uh, as we're wrapping up our service, I want to remind you of a few things. If you're joining us online, uh, would you please subscribe to our page and that just, or our YouTube channel, and that just lets other people know um, of how to get to uh, connect with us at NFC. Now, those of you in the room, a couple of things. I don't know if you noticed in our lobby, there are there is a room out there that says uh, remodel plans. If you'd like to see what our architect has drawn up for us, you can just take a little loop into that room and see what our future looks like. You'll see what the exterior, the exterior is going to get a huge transformation. We want people to look from the outside and go, ooh, I want to find out what's happening in that, that building. Amen. And then they find Jesus. Yeah. All right. And then also we have connect groups that are happening right in about 15 minutes. In this room, it's open to anybody. We're going to kind of transform the room. And Pastor Garen and I will be leading in here. We have a women's group meeting in the cry room kids will be taken care of don't even need to go get them youth are going to be meeting up in the upper room so it's going to be fun so i think that's all other than where are we going to be next week right here at 10 30 all right have a wonderful week god bless